So maybe we should just start, and then if anybody else um, you know shows up, we you know uh, we could continue. Um, so the purpose of today's meeting um, is um, to discuss um, our efforts to help people um, uplift their homes. Um, and Krista, Rich, Brian, um, we've all been working um, for months, you know, on, you know, on this. Um, FEMA will only um, help families get the grants if there was a study um, that was conducted, and um, you know, and basically, you know, there's recommendations on Babbitt Court. Uh, that's possible because they've already uplifted some homes on Babbitt Court. Um, for Troublesome Brook and Manhattan Brook, we have to wait for um, the study to be complete, um, you know, before residents, you know, in Edgemont and the Fairview sections, um, you know, would be eligible for, um, for the FEMA grants. Westchester County will be um, hopefully um, uh, reviewing um, a grant application um, that the town submitted uh, for a study uh, that would be conducted by Wood and Curran um, for Troublesome Brook and, um, and Manhattan Brook. And hopefully we'll get that grant, you know, this week or, you know, very soon. Um, so I thought the- oh, Is there any progress on those at all? Um, well, I spoke to you, you, Mary- You said Jane. you have to wait for the, the studies to be complete. How far along are they? Rich, we haven't we, really, Rich, could you give us no, an update on that? They, they've met with the uh, Woodard and Curran, the consultant that was approved by the board some months back, uh, has been working with uh, the town's engineering staff. So they were gathering some information. We met with the uh, Westchester County Stormwater Advisory Board, which I am a member. Um, and there were some questions back and forth there. I know that the members of the board have been polled. I've accused myself as due to the involvement I have with Greenberg, uh, but I'm expecting that probably early next week, there'll be an answer on that. Um, and those studies will take a while. It's, it's an it's a incredibly large study, uh, studies, and uh, they're very detailed. So as we know more, we'll certainly let keep the board in the loop. Does that go to the ANC, right? The, what? the the acquisitions um, and commissions. I don't know how it works on your end. Okay, I think maybe so. And those meetings are on Wednesdays, so I don't know what I don't remember what the the cutoff date is to yeah. see. Uh, do the they qualify for FEMA that... work? FEMA grants? I'm sorry. Say that again. Do they qualify for FEMA grants? Those other two. They, so, they only qualify after the study is completed. So the, the problem is that for today's meeting, are they so they are they in a floodway? Yes, a FEMA floodway. Yeah. Hit the federal maps. Yep. Okay. So so rich. So the, the bottom line is that okay. Wait, Paul. Just I just have a quick question. I'm sorry. So the the consultant that's working with the engineering, what what study is that for? Is that was that to include Babbitt Court or was that no. was just Manhattan? Okay, so can you tell me? So what, what was the consultant hired for? What is the work that, that they're looking at? We went to the board and the board approved two studies. One is for the Troublesome Brook, and the other is for the Manhattan Brook. Those are the only two studies in that. So we I, we can't have them, for instance. Go look at, you know, the Sawmill River. Uh, that would fall out of that study area. And if we did something like that, I'm sure if I went back to the board asking for a boatload of money on something I didn't get approved, you guys wouldn't be too happy with us. No, uh, but I just want to be. We approved what was requested of us to approve. Correct. Right? So the two areas that we were requested to approve, we approved. We weren't requested to approve something for Babbitt Court. That's 100% accurate. But Babbitt Court so, has a pre-existing study that we can use from 1996 or whatever that was, right? Right. Right. So could we go over and so right now, in effect, the only area that is eligible for a FEMA grant to uplift homes is Babbitt Court. Isn't that true? 
Well, there was a study that the town paid for, and Brian has dug up a lot of this information back in 2002. Um, and I would let him speak to that, but there was a study that was done. But again, the study is 20 years old. Um, I don't think much has changed out there. It's probably gotten worse, but I think to, to that, I, I would yield to Brian for his answer. Yeah, so, so real quick, as part of the application, right, the hazard mitigation um, grant program application, FEMA, you know, they, they asked, number one, is there a hazard mitigation plan that's in place? Um, and number two, is this the best alternative, right? Or is there another alternative to, to, to what's going on, right, to solve these problems? And that's the, the purpose of these studies, right? So with regards to Troublesome Brook and regards to uh, the Manhattan Brook, that's also the purpose of the study, right, is to investigate the existing conditions and come up with either a solution, right, a, a permanent long-term solution uh, to solving those drainage issues. And that could be a number of, of uh, options, right? Number one, it, it could be putting in like a detention system. It could be enlarging the pipes. It could be simply, if that's not feasible, then just simply raising the homes, right? And so that's why those studies are still very much ongoing. Uh, for the purposes of Babbitt Court, back in 2002, right, I mean, there's been numerous studies, right, even dating back to the 70s. In 1976, I think it was, the Army Corps of Engineers was doing a report on the Sawmill River. They did an update in 1996. Uh, then in the early 2000s, the town actually hired um, a consultant engineer to come in, and they actually did their own uh, hazard mitigation plan, um, and it was a floodplain management plan. Um, and the purpose of that was to uh, basically apply to FEMA for the raising of homes. And so that plan was, was done in, in uh, late 2001, early 2002, it was finalized. The town applied to FEMA on behalf of 16 homes on Babbitt Court. Um, and of those 16 homes, I believe it was 14 in total that were then uh, raised. Um, and so what we're trying to do now is are the homes that weren't raised back in 2002, are those homes now still eligible underneath the hazard mitigation plan? Um, number two, uh, homes that weren't included in that hazard mitigation plan, can they still uh, apply? You're asking the question, Brian, or you're stating that that's- No, I, I, think, I think these are all questions we have to ask of FEMA, right? Is, is does that does that hazard mitigation plan still apply, or, or do we have to get an updated plan? Because, um, like I said, they want to know is this the best alternative, right? Or, or is there any other mitigation measures that could be taken um, to prevent flooding in these areas? And so, uh, the application that was that was sent to us, um, you know, it's a very detailed application. It's not a simple, uh, you know, where's the project location? You know, they ask for very detailed information, especially when it comes to project costs, when it comes to the project schedule, they want to know um, the benefit cost analysis, right? So um, these, this is all information that, that requires a lot of um, supporting documentation, right? You know, where's the, the estimates? They want, you know, estimates from contractors, because ultimately the way the program works is the federal government gives the money to the local municipality. And then it's the, it's, it's really, it's, it's the responsibility of the local municipality, which in this case would be the town to, you know, administer the, um, the funding, manage the project requires managing the, the contractors themselves, um, as well as the, the payment to the contractors. And because there is that cost share, the town is then responsible for also obtaining the, the non-federal funding. Right, and so there are certain requirements to, to get this funding, and that's why you know um, these are just you know there there are certain questions that we still have to get answered from from the federal government, um, and then as well as on the town's end, come up with a plan for how we're going to, you know, if we decide to move forward with this, how we're going to manage this project moving forward, right? You know, especially when it comes to getting the appropriate resources, the appropriate staff to to make sure that the contractors are are doing exactly what they should be doing, right? Because Elevating homes means different things to different homeowners, right? You know, um, it's not as simple as just saying a blanket, we're going to raise the home 
you know, foot or, or two feet because we've only experienced two feet of, of flooding in the past, right? There's a certain um, elevation, right? The, the National Flood Insurance uh, Program, which is through FEMA, a, a base flood elevation. And so these homes, the first floor elevation has to be raised above that first floor elevation. So, and for each home, that could mean different, that can mean different things depending upon where you're located in the floodplain. Um, and we have a good example on the, on the road there, right? Because we have the Pfeiffer's house. So people will have an idea that that's, their house is not going up a foot, right? It's going up fairly substantially. Right, absolutely. So, so we have- can I, yes. can I ask a question just because just going back to um, the figuring the, the, the needs benefits and the, the cost analysis and um, whether this is a workable solution. We do have now a history of the homes that have been raised on Babbitt Court and how successful has that been? And is that something that we can cite in the application? Have they have with Ida, which had the most rainfall, the greatest amount of flooding? How did they fare? I did not very successful. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't. I was because I, I didn't hear of any complaints of, of, of right. those ones that were raised. I could tell you, you know, we do have a nice drone photo of uh, the day after Ida, and you can see the flooding that took place on on Babbitt Court and. Majority of the homes were were underwater, but you did see those homes that were raised. Um, they didn't seem to experience any flooding, or none that I heard of, at least. So yeah, we didn't get any calls from anybody but the people who weren't raised. So, so can you use that as um, in, in the application as proof that this, yeah, this is a, a yeah, suitable? I believe so. Yeah, and we and we have, and and that's what. Um, we just want to confirm, right, is the fact that uh, because it, that has been successful and we do have those base flood elevations from the previous application, that uh, we can use those same uh, elevations for this, okay. this application, right, or, for, or these homeowners can use that same elevation uh, on this application, that nothing has changed. I mean, I, I do know every few years, right, they try and update the um, uh, they call them the firm maps, the flood insurance rate maps. Um, so I think the last one was was updated in 2007. Uh, and every, you know, during every iteration, they they do kind of revise things based upon, you know, current building and, and new developments that take place. So uh, things may have changed a little bit. And that's why we, we, we need to first find out that information from FEMA um, with regards to does it still apply? So you you're go up, sorry. I, go on. You could go. No, I just want to know you're so you're compiling those questions now to sit down with our representative to ask them, correct? I wanted to meet with them today and unfortunately it's tomorrow. So we would have hoped we had those questions answered for you all this afternoon, but it didn't work out. But we have a meeting with them tomorrow at two. No. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I, I just wanted to mention I like Ellen's idea um, of reaching out to all the property owners who had their homes um, uplifted and putting that in an application because when I when I've been on Babbitt Court and I speak to the homeowners who had their homes lifted up, everybody was very very pleased with it. And I think that if we uh, put in the application testimonials from people who already have had it done, I think that would be helpful. Also, in the past like 20 years, the only changes we really have made is we've been you know, we have a team that's been removing obstructions from um, the Sawmill River. Uh, you know, we do that periodically and that's been helpful, but that's not a, a solution. The Army Corps of Engineers has been uh, studying uh, flood control in Elmsford for probably 75 years or whatever. And, you know, they've never done it. It's, wait, it's too wait, expensive. Wait. There's, there's a reason for that. There's it's a reason. Too expensive. Yeah. No, no, that wasn't the reason. The reason was that because it was taking so long, the shop owners and residents in that floodplain got disgusted and didn't want to wait and didn't bother applying for insurance, just went ahead and paid out of pocket. So when, when the Army Corps of Engineers was ready to move ahead, the New York State 
said there isn't that much damage. So they would not kick in monies because it, did, it appeared on paper like there wasn't enough damage to warrant their monies in their investment. So that's what happened with that. Um, and there's another little problem with that. Four of engineers has done a couple of studies in Elmsford and they're not inclined to do yet another study and do it because they've been, they put in all that effort and nothing came of it. Right, but that's, that's positive in terms of our application to uplift homes because there's really no other alternative to, um, other, other alternative that could work that could um, help the families that want to uplift their homes, you know, get the grant. But I right, thought that's separate days, from from right. the Army Corps of Engineers study. Right. And if the Army Corps of Engineers study was viable, then it would hurt our chances of getting the grant. It's not going to happen. The the flood relief, uh, significant flood relief. So this is the next best thing, I think. The question I have is, could we outline, you know, Krista and Rich and Brian, could you outline what the next steps at the town? I feel the town board is committed to. Um, um, to do the uplifting of homes. Could we go over, we only have like a month and a half to apply to get the application in. Could we go over and say, this is the steps that we have to take if we, uh, you know, to apply, um, who's gonna be in, uh, responsible um, and sort of a timetable. So this way, um, residents of Babbitt Court could see that, you know, we do have a timeline, we are committed and this is gonna happen. I think you're kind of jumping the gun because I think, Paul, the, the issue is, and, and you said it yourself, the DPW is stressed, stretched to the max. So how are they going to manage the, um, well, the we minister? So what we need first is to understand what the implications are of that for them. And if they have personnel to manage it, what that means, if they don't, how much that would be. And then we can do a timeline because how can we just do a timeline when we don't know if we well, have- Well, that? if we don't do, we have- well, We only have a timeline of six weeks. So we, we don't, only have we know. Well, I mean, the, so, so it's other, really, I mean, it's really, where do you right. put the dots along six weeks? You know, we my, know in my, six my, weeks. My, <laughs> my feeling is that, um, you know, I feel that I know for myself, you know, I've been in touch with Ms. Rodriguez um, during the, you know, she's emailed me. We, I always thought that the uplifting of homes was a good idea. So I take responsibility in some ways of leading, you know, residents on um, saying that, you know, this is a practical, you know, approach to addressing, you know, flooding. So I feel that the town, uh, you know, should commit to, um, um, to, you know, pursuing this. You know, I feel that, it, you know, it, it does, it would work. I feel that the more success we have, uh, once we do the studies on Troublesome Brook and Manhattan Brook, uh, you know, I think people basically would like to see it, you know, get done. And, um, you know, I, I feel that, you know, talking about, you're only talking about six weeks. And I, I feel- well, Ellen, no, no, wait, hold on a second. If we, if we sorry, get I'm the grant. Excuse me, excuse me. Can sorry. we back up? Can we back to train up, please? I'm sorry. So we, we, we still have not answered the question about who's gonna be able to manage that, right? I understand, I understand that now that Ms. Rodriguez brought this to our attention of what we need to do going forward. But my question is, I believe if I heard Rich correctly, and I'm, I'm not sure if it was on this call or if it was previous calls that I had with them this week on this issue, we still not have identified if we can even handle this in-house. From what I'm hearing and what I'm understanding is that we would definitely have to contract this work out, right? And this, and the fact that we only have six weeks, and I'm just, I guess I'm just frustrated at the fact that how come we're just learning about this now and there was no further directive of we need to get, we need to make sure that we outline everything and figure out what we need to do going forward. Because now, now, now in a crunch term, because now we have to get not only our records, but then we, we still have to enlist the consultants to take a look at to see the cost benefit and everything else. Correct me if I'm wrong, someone. Uh, I think well, you understand that if, if we, and I think Winsome found this out, is it's better to put in an incomplete application than no application. And so 
we should you know, work as diligently as we can for six weeks. I mean, that's the timeline. You know, it's it's what what can we get done in six weeks and get as much as possible. Uh, you know, clearly cost benefit analysis. Uh, I mean, in the past, for cost benefit analysis with the dredging of the of the river, um, the Army Corps hasn't been willing to do that because it said the cost benefit in that area, it it it's it just doesn't work. But it did work down in Arsley because there were businesses, which you know, which is a shame. So we're not going to get the river dredged, and so the only way to do this is to raise the homes. I don't know of anybody who has ever said that they were opposed to raising the homes. We did it. We did it once. We could do it again, and that we were never. It was never an issue whether or not the board was supportive or not as to raising the homes. And, I, I guess to Ellen's point, the question is: I don't think we have a huge issue completing this grant application, to be honest, right. is the homeowners um, supply a certain amount and we don't have to be completely thorough, but it's, it, God forbid, if we get the grant, can we manage this for however many years we're um, individually worried about all these homes? We well, did we've it done it the before. Past, the only difference again. before is that the homeowners had to, you know, they went for the homeowners to pay the money. Now we have to put out the money and find a, a, a mechanism of getting the money back, I assume from the property owner, that 10%, which is only, now it's 10%, right? So it's much less than it used to be. So there's- But are we managing the contractors and that, that whole thing? And is that on the right. DPW? Right. right. Can and we yeah. ask if um, they'll allow administration right. costs? Yes, because that was also that was also an issue as well that we needed to make sure that I'm talking about managing a program, managing a project in, in its entirety. Right. Because uh, I know I, let me just finish. I know that I know that DPW is under constraints as it is now with all the projects that they have on hand. So I don't I just I don't want to get into that again that we mislead or, or make false promises. So I just want to make sure that we clearly outline all that is entailed and again. I'm going to defer to Rich, Garrett, and, and Brian to really outline what all is going to need so we make sure that we can meet that. So they can bring to present to the board to say, these are this is the resource that we need. These are the resources that we need. We need to make sure that we're clear on that because it appears to me that we're going to have to contract some of this work out. And, you know, to me, I would just like to get to the goal line, right? And, you know, there's going to be a time to spike the ball, but right now we have a, a you know a serious problem that we have to address, and uh, there, there there is an issue whether or not FEMA will come back a second time to the same home and offer the same thing. I understand that that's a possibility that um, that they may question that, but those are the answers I assume that will come forward tomorrow, and we'll get answers to that. Um, but uh, we got six weeks and six weeks now, you know, now I'm hearing is it's no problem getting the grant. It's, you know, how do we manage the project afterwards? So this is something I'm just hearing for the first time today. Right. Um, so that's what we have to factor, Francis. We have to approve something without having a price tag on what is involved or whether it's a, a, an outside consultant or someone else hired on. Okay. And, and also just one one other thing. There are two grants concurrent, each of them at 10%. So is that 10% plus 10% that we have to recover? Do the, both grants would apply to these homeowners? So one might cover X amount of dollars and the other an additional amount of dollars and each well, of them at 10% or is that just- well, We have an expert in grants on the line here. So I win know. some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there are two funding sources. There's a lot of money left over from COVID. So the two applications that Brand will be doing was one for Ida and one for COVID. It's the same application. And what um, FEMA said to me was this, get the application in and then worry about the other things later on. The lady said the money is there and it's just for us to get the application in. They will work with us and they will help us through the process. And yes, you might have to hire a consultant later on to do the rest of the work. But she says, what you need to do is get that application in by June 1st. Even if it's incomplete, I, I, they'll work with the town. Now I wanna interject something. I, Troublesome Brooke, I wanna ask a question, supervisor, I'm sorry. 
Troublesome Brook and Manhattan Avenue Brook, they were all affected by Ida, weren't they? Yes. Did they experience past damages before Ida? Yes. Do they have, okay, if they have a history of previous flooding, they can apply for these two, two grants. They can apply this time too. And you see how you have to, uh, two studies out there? You can use some of the information on th from the study to help Brian with the application. If let's say that people were, did, ha did not have access to emergency services, the roads were blocked, you know, um, if you can itemize the damages, this will also help the application. But we must look at the whole thing. The worst that FEMA can say is that somebody doesn't qualify. So get the, as, as Krista was saying, get the homeowners involved because they're going to be doing a lot of research. They're going to be able to tell you how many times their house has been damaged by flooding in the past. Get them involved. And I think if we put our heads together, we probably could do this. Now, I agree with um, um, Councilwoman Hendricks that we have to think about, and, and Councilwoman Jackson, we also have to think about the management afterwards. But the way how I see it is that it's not going to cost the town anything really. Hypothetical, everything costs 100000 FEMA is going to give you about 90000 The homeowner paid 10000 So it's a win situation where we're going to have FEMA pay for all these things for us. So let's put our heads together and address all the issues that our two councilwomen brought forward about managing it afterwards. But get the application in. It's an opportunity. The worst that can happen is that we tell FEMA, FEMA we can't progress. Right, Brian? I, I, think, I think it's great. But I, I think that the encouraging thing from Winston's comments is that people, we might be able to apply uh, for Troublesome Brook and, um, and um, Manhattan Brook, you know, the people on Warren Avenue. I mean, all of us, right after the storm, we all said we, we want to help. We all made commitments right. that we were going to try helping. Let's do everything humanly possible to um, help, you know, move this forward. If um, if we apply, say, for uh, 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 Troublesome and Manhattan Brook and we don't get it, at least we tried. Um, on the other hand, because if Winston thinks there's a possibility we could get it, that would be great. We do have a history. We've uplifted people's homes. Um, we've been successful, um, you know, with, with that, you know, with that. This is a follow-up, and I feel that if it's going to that you know if we have to hire a consultant to help uh, DPW, I would be in favor of hiring a consultant because I feel we made promises to residents that we were going to do everything possible to um, help them um, with a significant flooding problem. A lot of people lost homes. You know, Miss Rodriguez has been uh, homeless for seven months. So, so let's just be say. clear, Paul. Let's just be clear on what you just said. It's not yeah. just only hiring a consultant on what to, uh, to move this application for it. It's also hiring the staff in, in addition to PD, PD, oh, no. what is the DPW to make sure that this work can get done. Again, I, I don't. Willing, I'm I, I don't, to I, it. I don't. Okay. I'm okay. One, so one remember, 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 remember. Okay. Okay, well, we we wish we would have had this before, but I just want to make sure I've that always everyone been committed to this. Let me uh, let me finish, please, please. I'm not going to go back and forth on that situation, but we just need to make sure that everybody on this call understand what it's entail, what, what everything entails. And although that we all agree that we want to make sure that we make um, that we have our residents whole again for those who have lost their homes in Ida and other things related to Ida, that this go that what we're doing going forward is going to happen, is going to work because it's not just about hiring one staff member to, to file an application, there's a, rolling, there's a rolling effect after that. So, and that's why I keep deferring to Rich and, and Brian to make sure that they can understand everything that's entailed and what, what, what we need to make this happen. And I have a question about, you know, we took this survey, 39 residencies want to lift their homes. And I've been afraid to communicate with them until we know for sure they can be included in this or not. And I think we're still unclear of who can be included and do they really need to have a study behind them or does it require some engineering now that we can hire somebody to do? Um, so Brian and I keep going back and forth on the list and creating different numbers of subsets of people that are appropriate, but I really don't know. So I. I'm afraid to start with these citizens and tell them they're on a list if we're going to rule them out for whatever reason. Well, yeah, we it, to, it wouldn't be yeah. us ruling them out. It would be FEMA, FEMA guidelines, right? So, right. so we're not 100% sure what FEMA, that is. 
FEMA has said right. Babbitt Court definitely, right? They've said Babbitt Court definitely, at least that's the email I saw. I right. haven't seen it for any other area. So we need them to tell us uh, Manhattan Brook definitely or Troublesome Brook definitely uh, so that we don't mislead people into thinking that we can do something we can't do. Um, that, that, Jeanette that's correct. Told me, Jeanette told exactly. me that there were three other, three other residents who were anxious to um, raise their houses. Uh, so. Krista, I have a question for you. And in, in speaking to the residents, did you indicate to them that by raising their homes, more than likely they're going to lose the basement? Well, that's what I'm saying. I have not communicated with them well, you recently need to tell and them they're chopping at the bit because I want to know where FEMA and we stand on. Are they getting included in this grant or not? But to Winsome's point, the residents need to understand what all this entails. Yes, For they're sure. going to lose the basement. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I want to have that conversation with them as soon as we know they're invited to the party. <laughs> right. I, I, I agree with Krista 100%. You don't want to say to them, we're going to raise your house, but you need to, you, you need to understand you're going to lose the basement. And then all of a sudden we find out from FEMA, oh, by the way, we can't raise your house or you have to do it on your own dime, right? Everybody can raise their house, right? There's no restriction on somebody raising their house. The, the town will let them do that, but there's a very significant cost to it. And that's why we need this federal, this federal money. Even, even the 10% the um, match that goes along with it that they now require the town to administer, right? What we need is somebody to come in and tell us what will be those costs later on, right? After June 1st and we get the grant, what are those, those, those costs ahead of time so we can build it into the 90% and the 10% so that it's not, okay, we get 90% and 10% and when we have all these overages, who's gonna pick up that, right? Right, but we also we, have the issue why don't we, the town can't make basically a donation to a private house right this but, has to but be why don't we why it. don't we why don't we have krista maybe we could work tomorrow on getting fema um somebody from fema to speak uh to the town board uh, well we whenever. have a meeting brian and i have a meeting with them tomorrow at two which okay. will have our big list of questions so then we'll have the answer tomorrow That's yeah I, I think and i I, th I think we need some clarity right as far as the, the hazard mitigation plan that was done for Babbitt Court, right? That was done specifically for the Sawmill River and Babbitt Court area, right? Right, correct. The Troublesome Brook, the Manhattan Brook, they're not, they don't, they're not a tributary to the Sawmill River. They're a tributary, they ultimately lead to the Bronx River, right? Sure. So it's a completely different water course. So we can certainly, you know, look to FEMA and we can ask if, if we can apply on their behalf, if we're going to be applying on behalf of, of Babbitt Court. But uh, you know, it's ultimately on FEMA's end, are they going to be a part of the same application or are they going to require a separate application for that area? Because even though they're within this, the town of Greenberg, separate water body. And number two, if it's going to be a separate application, are they going to require a, an independent, independent application, application plan, which is which something is, we would then need a consultant, right, to, to do, which is what we currently have someone working on. And then right. there's properties on the list that aren't covered in either of those areas. Right? right, exactly, correct. So what do we do about those miscellaneous, there's one lady alone who has no neighbors. One lady, they, they can do, they'll do one residence, but is that, is that lady near the sawmill? Is she, what, is she near the Bronx River? Is she near the river? Um, that's that 40, What's that address that um, Francis, you gave me that address today? <laughs> She's going to. Yeah. So, I mean, Brian's question is that a separate application for each separate system? Well, you know, you're going to be that, you're going to be well, meeting tomorrow. Have, so why don't hold on a second, Paul? Let me let me just make a suggestion. You're at different stages of information on each one. You have none. Troublesome. And uh, and it, you you have the you have just a proposal which we're waiting for funding on but hasn't been done and Babbitt Court has been done but back in two thousand two or two thousand seven I forget what you said uh, 
So there, there are three at three different stages. I can't see us rolling that into one. I, I don't. It doesn't make logical sense that that could happen. It's, you know, Rich, Brian, Garrett, and and Winsome. You can straighten me out on that. Yeah, but what if we're having a meeting tomorrow? If Krista and Brian are meeting tomorrow, speaking tomorrow to people from FEMA, and a FEMA and they ask these questions. Wouldn't it make sense for uh, them to ask the questions? Um, you know, tomorrow we ask the questions tomorrow. Then we report back to the town board tomorrow at the work session what they say. They may say you can't do troublesome brook. They may say you can do troublesome brook. If they whatever they say, uh, we'll do. We could basically. Right. I want to. Pro so, so my feeling is that we don't really know what the answers are. Just yeah, but, but fortunately, they have a, meet, a, a, a phone uh, conversation tomorrow, and then we'll report back to the town board tomorrow at, uh, at the work session, and then we'll move forward. And really, the, pr the purpose is, is, you know, if the board is committed to, um, to helping residents apply, um, if, we're, if, they, if we feel they, they will qualify, then, then there's really no issues from our standpoint. Um, and, you know, from my standpoint, I'm willing to put the resources and um, and give the public works department the tools they need to make this happen. Okay, okay. so what about, so we're supposed to have um, the residents come in and meet with us. I just, is it makes, does it make sense for them to, I mean, they can listen. I just don't want to bring them in and they don't have, and they're not, they don't have a clear idea. Or we don't have a clear answer to give to them. Whatever we have. You know, Whatever we have tomorrow, we will, we, you know, we'll, we'll report at, at the work session. And um, as long as I think the people on Babbitt Court, the, you know, they, they'll know that we're moving ahead with that, you know, with, with that, um, the, uh, the troublesome and Manhattan Brook, we, we, we will have to wait and see what uh, FEMA says, uh, you know, tomorrow. But let's, let's move, um, you know, forward and, and see if we could help the maximum number of people and give public works the, the resources they need to, you know, to make this, you know, this happen. I think so we gonna, is this person so tomorrow? To have, I'm sorry, yes, Gina, go ahead. Ahead. no, I just want to make sure. So we, we invited, we invited the residents to come in or Paul invited the residents to come in and have a meeting. I just don't want them to come in and we have Which nothing residents? to offer them. No, I no. I Ms. Ro Ms. Let me finish, Ms. Ma Ms. Rodriguez. It's on the email. If oh. you look at the email chain, it says for them to come in into a meeting, and that's why I responded and said I don't want them to come in and we don't have anything to offer them. I don't want to, you know, because they're already frustrated. I'm, I'm frustrated, so we want to make sure whatever, whatever, and maybe Krista and Brian and um. Krista and Brian and Rich could possibly give us an update or something before inviting them into the meeting. Because if we don't have anything to really offer them, it's not fair to them. They're going to sit and just, we, we have nothing conclusive. Well, we're going to apply for the grant. That's what we're offering them. We, you know, we did, first of all, this is not like rocket science. We did this before and it was successful. We're going to do, we, we'll do it again. So there, it's not, it's not that we're not going to do it. The bottom line is that as far as Babbitt Court, we have the most done for Babbitt Court, so we can tell the residents of Babbitt Court we have a good shot, hopefully, um, in finishing the application in time, is what you're saying. But I wouldn't say that for anyone else, no. because I think there's too much else. So you're, you're, you're inviting Babbitt Court residents only. Just you know, I, to be it's honest, so I just told People, I just told Ms. Rodriguez and um, another gentleman that um, that we were going to discuss it tomorrow. Uh, I, you know, I haven't invited you know the world to to the meeting. Um, you know, we could basically mm -hmm. let them know that we're doing our due diligence. We're going to do everything possible, and we could keep them informed. You know, they, they probably don't even they want the results. They want the application filed, and I think that if they see that the town is committed to it, they're not going to care about the meeting. Right. So the people that you're meeting with tomorrow, the uh, by phone, are they in a position to make definitive um, assurances to us on behalf of FEMA? Because again, it's a phone conversation. You know what? What I'm going by is what I saw in an email, which was Babbitt Court clearly is in the flood zone. I like to read it. 
right? Not just, oh, this is what I heard you say. And then later on, somebody says, well, that's not exactly what I meant. Uh, tomorrow, you know, we're saying tomorrow, like as if, you know, we're going to see the tablets, you know, um, right, right. with the Ten Commandments on them. It, what What is actually tomorrow? You're going to ask questions, you're going to get answers, then we're going to turn that around and tell everybody what their answers are. Can they back up what they're saying? Or are they going to, what is it? We, I don't want to raise expectations even on what, where this phone call is about. Right. right. I, now I think now we we're did. hearing about how easy it is to get the grant. And yet, you know, we only have- Oh, I didn't say easy. Well, I, just, I, I, I think- I, I, yeah. I, I didn't mean you. I didn't mean you. And, and I think to that point, we, we have to manage what the expectation is with this application, right? We got to find out, we need to get some guidance from FEMA. What, what is entailed with this application, right? Like I mentioned earlier, right? There's extensive information that they're, they're requesting for, right? For the project schedule, for the benefit cost analysis to be performed, right? These are all things that, that take a lot of resources and it requires a lot of work, right? It, it requires going out and getting proposals from contractors, which I know some of the, the residents have already begun, right? But it's also then there's, there's sub agreements that have to be taken out between then the town, right? And between the these homeowners now, right? And, and those subagreements also then have to, so I think we need to find out, are is this, you know, are these requirements or do these things have to be in place by June 1st? Do they need the proposals, the supporting documentation to go along with the costs on June 1st? Because if that's the case, then we have a very, very short timeline. And I, uh, you know, that's something it, it's we obviously something we can try and do, but there's no guarantee that we'd be able to make that June 1st deadline. If they simply just want, you know, a, a location, uh, um, you know, if, if they will accept of a, of a partial um, application and then we can follow up with that information, you know, in the, in the following months, then that, that's something that I think is a little bit more, um, a little bit more doable, right? Something that, that a little bit that, that we can uh, kind of strive towards. But, and she did say partial, but we don't know what that means. So we need to have her define right, right. what's the bare minimum we could do. Right. For so there is no and guarantee. Also, there is no guarantee that we can apply by June first either. Right. We got to just find out what exactly it is that they need from us. Um, right. But I, you know, the other thing is that we could reach out to. I could reach out to Senator Schumer's office, uh, Congressman Mundia Jones' office, um, and ask them if they would also. Um, help us, um, you know, with with the application. I feel that FEMA and the congressional delegation they want to help people. Yeah, that's they their business. Want to help and, people, but that is the purview of FEMA. They right. they want, but what what are they going to do? They're not going to fill out the applications. No, for but I feel I feel that if, it, for example, if it's a income, not a totally complete application, I I am convinced we'll be able to that we have a, a, a very very good chance of getting this grant because I was involved in the grant application uh, years ago when the town successfully uplifted homes on Babbitt Court. So this is not- Hi, Paul, Paul you, you know, wishful I, thinking is one thing, but- It's not wishful thinking, this, I'm basically wait, 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 on experience. But wait a minute, but, but the logistics of getting there what, are what they, we're discussing, not how you feel right now. Well, well, well the logistics is, I'm, I feel that we have to say we're going to make it happen. You know, the thing is, if you want to, if we basically look and find yeah, all these negatives, it's never going to happen. I want to say we are committed to this. The direction is that we're going to move forward on this. We're going to give the Public Works Department uh, uh, the the tools they need. We want to do everything you know possible to get that grant um, seriously considered by by FEMA. And you know what? I I believe that if we all are committed to it, we're gonna make it happen, just like we've done with other things. We just have a timeline to, to be- uh, I'm, uh, I'm very optimistic about this. If we so, all uh, well, work together. We'll find out tomorrow, I think, when Winsome and Rich uh, and right. Ryan will right. get a better so, idea. So- If I can interject for a second, I sure. appreciate and I respect everything that everyone has said on this line. And I support most of what was said and I respect all of you. I wanna say something, um, Krista, what I think we need to determine right away is find out how many applicants you're gonna have because that was a question she said to me when I called her Wednesday night after crying and listening to that board meeting. 
You need to know how many applicants you have. That's important, very important, okay? She did say she would accept an incomplete application and later on the town can get some a consultant. She did say all that. Now, I personally feel that everyone here on this line should be on the meeting at two o'clock with FEMA tomorrow because everyone brings great ideas to the table. I don't think it should be just two people on that line because what you hear, how we interpret things sometimes is not how it really is. So I think as many people on this line should be at that meeting. Rich, Brian and myself have met with FEMA before. And usually FEMA will do a conference, a call like this, where we can see the people's faces or hear them. So it, it won't be just a phone call. You'll have little boxes just like this, and you'll be able to either see their face when they're speaking or see their name. So I really think it's a good idea to have everyone here on that call tomorrow because Garrett will bring things to the table. Um, Supervisor Fina, uh, Councilman Sheehan and Jackson and Hendricks, they'll all bring things to the table that people could miss. So I think it's a good idea to try and get everyone at that meeting tomorrow. This way, all these things can be- I'll make up. myself available. Yeah, I'm I available. Cannot, I, I cannot be there. I'll be at so, town, but for something else. For, so for can I be available and then we, so it's three people in a meeting. I just wanna make sure we're not breaking any rules. Francis? I have to do the same thing we just did. Okay, so can we now? I'll be there. So can we can we notice that, please? Krista, is that okay with you? Well, the question yeah, is, I'm will not. FEMA will FEMA participate in a recorded call, which is interesting too. Oh, and and uh, their uh, meeting uh, link. Um, right. That's, yeah. You got to find that out in advance. Didn't they say no before? To they the said report? no before. Right, which gets to my point as to, you know, we, we the, Gina, the call is not, I don't think we can just take everything we hear at the call and run with it because there may be nuances to some of their answers and there likely will be, uh, but we won't know that until we hear their answers. Well, if there are two members on there and, you know, I, I, Respectfully, Paul, I think Gina, who has done a lot of digging into this, and, and Francis, who absolutely crosses all T's and dot I, dots I's on everything, that maybe that would be good for them. That's fine. I don't, I don't have to. I have a lot of other work, so it's fine. Okay. Um, if, if that's, can you make it, Gina? Yes, I'll make sure I'm there. Okay. And Francis, you said you can. So that yeah. way we don't have to record. Rich, actually, you're well, going to be- Wait, 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 wait. That doesn't mean yeah, we, we have, have, we have a separate we still meeting, need to... Colin. Yeah. Okay, so we Rich still, don't we still want to make sure, meeting. I'm sorry, don't we, don't we still want to make sure that we're able to record the call? We should still have that information because we want to make sure that we, we still have to have some concrete information. I don't want us to, you know, I don't want us to, we we come back and interpret stuff. Well, at least we have factual information from FEMA to say based on the call that we had on whatever date it was. This is what's stated to us. I think we need to have that as well. Well, if they if they don't let you record, you you at least can, you know, you won't be. You have a fallback position. You have a fallback, yeah. But as and Rich and I are going to be in the same meeting tomorrow, so we neither of us can be at this meeting. Will Brian be in the meeting? I'll be there. Yes. He has to be okay. there. <laughs> well, I just want to make it exactly Brian yeah. that we have to reschedule. <laughs> we have to reschedule. Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Um, don't go yet, okay? I'm talking to FEMA right now. Don't go. Okay. While you're talking to FEMA, I'm supposed to meet, I'm supposed to go over to Babbitt Court and meet Jeanette. I don't have to say anything, but I want to see it. So she's going to show it to me. Okay. And uh, I don't know, Rich or Brian, if you can or want, want to or can be there um, or anyone else who wants to come with me. When's the meeting? Okay, Krista, Ten um, minutes. I, just, I just spoke to the lady, the same lady we've been speaking to. Um, she said the recording, she's going to find out from the other people at FEMA if the recording is a problem, okay? Because I said, if you have three or more town council members, it has to be recorded. So mm -hmm. she said, what if you only have two? If you have two, does it have to be recorded? No. No. 
Okay, so she's gonna get back to you. Krista. She's gonna get back to you tomorrow and tell you, okay? Okay. She said they're all gone, so she couldn't ask the question tonight. Sure. I can't believe you've got somebody answering the phone for you at 5.20 on a Monday. Good job. Apparently she got somebody Wednesday night. That's the lady. I, I know. At 10 o'clock. You know why? Because I've been working with some of these people with COVID, so they know me. Yeah. That's the thing. Pain Good job. They know me. <laughs> <laughs> so she answered the call at 10 o'clock uh, after the board meeting because I was crying because I was upset over what, what Ms. Rodriguez was saying because I too was flooded at one point. So I kind of, I empathize with her and I understood what she was going through. So I called Fima and I said, what can we do? What can we do? And she, she talked to me for about an hour on the phone. Mm -hmm. So that's how I have her number, okay? So I apologize if I overstepped my boundaries. You didn't overstep your boundaries. It's all about building a relationship know. with some. You're fine. We just, need, we just need to make sure we don't let this fall any longer than what it has. Right. I've texted it there because you're the, you're, you're the body of the town. You're this decision-making body. So. You need to be there to help everyone to make a decision. I don't make decisions. I'm just there to do what I'm told. I met with Rich and, and Brian, and I'm there for them. Whatever they need, I will be there for them. But I don't make decisions. I just do what I'm told. So I think uh, I think we're done for today. We are. So, so, we, so let me ask you this really quickly. So even though we're having a meeting tomorrow at 2, are we still going to invite the, the residents to come out at 4.30? We could say we're not. Are we, are we just going to have them? Are we just going to have them listen to Zoom, and they can they, see, they, maybe submit they, questions that way? Had, okay, okay. I just wanted to finish my question. Okay, Paul, go ahead and answer. I didn't follow that. You were it's talking over a, each other. I, it's not right now. We know that we're committed to do whatever we can to help. The public doesn't have to, you know, the people who are impacted, they don't have to say, please help us. We're all ready. To, we want to do help everybody. So I think what we should do is let them know that at the meeting, we're going to give a, a, a brief update um, as to, you know, what our action steps are and uh, a report as to uh, what FEMA said, uh, you know, we could do. And we should also mention that all the town could do is do the best efforts, giving residents the best chance of getting the FEMA, um, you know, grant. We can't make any commitments because when you apply for anything, you're, it's an application. It doesn't mean it's going to be approved, but we're going to do the best job we, we can do. And we're going to provide public works department with the resources they need to, um, to get everything done. And if, uh, if people, since this meeting is being recorded, we can make this meeting available um, to them and, and we can make uh, tomorrow's meeting available to them. And I think they'll see that we all are committed to making this happen. They'll be happy. All right. we'll, we'll know more information tomorrow. Right. Okay, good. Okay, thanks. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Great. Thank you, you're welcome.